So growing up, 50 Cent was one of, if not my favorite rapper. Everything about him from the actual music to the persona and even the story behind his name all drove me to his music. He was this Iron Man type of figure that had been shot nine times and lived to rap the tale. Calling out literally everyone and anyone on his way to prominence with his very unique marketing skills. A good shot changed me a lot. I don't care about shit no more. Well, you can say I'm worse. Cause I really don't give a fuck. Now it's, now it's more like, I know that I'm not in control of everything. You know, if you believe in God, you believe God got a plan for you. It was almost like a hood fairy tale. And back then, rappers were like these bigger than life characters. So it was really a perfect storm for success. Kids today will never understand how big of an artist 50, or really any of these other guys were back in the early 2000s. Any rapper now pales in comparison to the superstardom they had at their peak. And even though other rappers like Kanye West, Jay-Z, and Eminem have stayed relevant longer when it comes to their current music, 50 was still arguably the most popular at his peak. The only comfort zone I have is that they, where I come from and people's judgment on me is already that I'm a bad guy. Why did you call it the massacre? I think it's aggressive enough. I think that uh, it's going to be hard for my fellow artists to survive. You predicting that once this album drops, you're going to knock all your competitors yeah. off the charts, out of the game. You'll see more damage done than they've ever seen before. But once he had enough of being 50, he really wanted to focus on being Curtis Jackson, the businessman. And for the last decade and a half that's been his main focus, the once rapper built himself into an award-winning producer with his show Power, a two-time best-selling author with his books The 50th Law and Hustle Harder, which is basically his personal story. I've read both of these books and I find them extremely inspiring. Curtis Jackson is also an affluent investor in many companies, while also remaining a savage online. This is a special A-S-L-E-L-S -E challenge for you, Floyd. If you can read one full page of a Harry Potter book, nigga, I'll give 750000 to whatever charitable organization you want to. Fuck the bucket of ice, man. So you would think that he would live in this dream world after accomplishing all of his dreams. But the thing about sin at the top is that it can become a very lonely experience. This man is clearly a cutthroat, no bullshit businessman who seems to do anything to get what he wants. And so after a couple of months of following you around, I decided that the secret to your success, your power center of gravity, is your fearlessness. So in any kind of situation where you're interacting with people, you're the one that has less fear than they do. And that gives you like a constant strategic advantage. But what happens when it's your own flesh and blood you have to cut off? What happens when you have an ungrateful son who never felt like you were there for him, whether that be physically, mentally, or financially? Well, in that case, you would have 50 Cent's son, Marquise Jackson. If I'm a, if I'm a million dollar nigga, yeah. my son gonna be a million dollar nigga. I'm a billion dollar nigga. Right, me, my son gonna be a billion dollar nigga. Because that's my show you something. And people have known these two have had a turbulent relationship for quite some time, as Marquise is not shy to the media when it comes to taking shots at his father, and 50 isn't exactly shy to respond. Basically, to sum it up, this man has daddy issues, and at the age of 25, it seems like it's just getting worse as he tries to navigate the world without the help of his father. He recently went on this interview and said some of the most privileged shit I've ever heard. Listen to, listen to what I'm saying to you. Right. 6700 a month, right? Six seven hundred a month in the state of New York City. You you do the math. Oh, I done the, I done the math. I've been in child support, bro. I went to jail for it. So I, I said so. Okay, on. okay, cool. Six seven hundred a month, right? Six seven hundred a month, right? Eighty one k is not is not a substantial a lot of money. This man was really out here crying about only personally receiving sixty nine hundred dollars a month for himself and himself only. And this was apparently only half of the child support that 50 was paying him and his mother. These people were out here collecting over $160,000 a year, more than most people in this country could ever dream of making, and this man is out here acting like he was struggling in the streets, begging to hold a dollar, acting like his dad is Julius from Everybody Hates Chris. You can't just okay. live anywhere. And, and if he's contributing 6700 that means your mom's got the other half. It ain't just for him to fuck take care of you she got to take care of you 700 no where's her 6700 to go with his now y'all got 12 1300 oh now 13000 a month i know what it feels like to have nothing all right and had to rebuild my life over 6700 a month marquise i know you feel 
like that ain't a lot of money, but it's a lot of people here watching right now. And girls that's getting two hundred dollars a month. If I told you right now, right, you got to start your life over right now with sixty seven hundred a month and rebuild your life. Yes. Can you do it? With sixty seven hundred, I guess. Sixty seven hundred. I'm good. That's what a I'm month, saying. nigga. I'm comparing it yes. to yourself. I jumped out of a burning house, brother. Okay. And I know that many celebrities and rich elite people probably have insufferable children, but it doesn't have to be like this. In 50 Cent's book I mentioned earlier, he goes into detail when it comes to the strain in their relationship and how at its core it has a lot to do with the mother and how she raised their son. 50 claims that she raised Marquise in a way that made him very spoiled and entitled, basically thinking that he deserves everything to come easy to him in life on a silver spoon and that he should not have to work hard for absolutely absolutely anything. Like many kids from his generation, Marquise has always been into sneakers. Because he's my son, he couldn't just rock any old sneakers either. If a new pair of Jordans came out, he had to have them right away. If Marquise asked for a pair of Jordans on Monday, his mother would make sure they were on his feet by Tuesday. It still didn't make him happy. Instead of being excited to rock his new pair of Jordans, all Marquise could think about was all of the retro Jordans he didn't have. When he should have felt gratification, all he really felt was disappointment. I could not relate. Now tell him how you told my son to call me and tell me he need 50 pairs of sneakers for back to school. I did not say that. You said he, so he said somebody else got a whole bunch of pairs of sneakers. I said he said a boy in his class hunted on him and said he has 50 pairs of sneakers. And Marquis said, how the hell does he have 50 pairs of sneakers? Yeah, then why you didn't be a responsible parent and say, look, you don't need 50 pairs of shoes. Twenty pairs of sneakers. So basically, he has the exact opposite mindset of his father when it comes to work ethic and the appreciation for life. There have been a lot of disappointing moments in my relationship with Marquise over the past few years. But the lowest was when I saw him post a picture of himself with Kyle McGriff, the son of Kenneth Supreme McGriff. Without rehashing too much bad history, Kenneth McGriff was one of the biggest drug dealers in Queens and the man the authorities believed was behind the attempt on my life. So by posing with his son, Marquise was basically co-signing an individual who might have tried to have his father killed. I mean, when your kid is out here posing with the son of the man who tried to end your life, that's how you know he means war. 50 says this is when he truly realized that his son really hates him. One of the very few things that has bothered him in his life. I've tried to put myself in Marquise's shoes. Just as he doesn't know what it's like to grow up under the circumstances I did, I don't know what it was like to grow up as the son of 50 Cent. Certainly on the surface, he had everything he wanted. But there must have been pressures and insecurities from being my son that I can't identify with. In the very same book, he also details a story where he talks about trying to really make amends and help his son make something of himself when he basically funded the startup cost and inventory for an online sneaker shop. 50's idea was to sell shoes online in a direct-to-consumer fashion. His son would manage the website and get someone else to keep track of the inventory and sales. Keep in mind, this was back in the mid-2010s, right before sneaker resale really boomed into the multi-billion dollar industry that it is today. You know, this was long before the stock X of the world really got it popping. Also, keep in mind that his son was passionate about sneakers. So it was really a win-win, as he would get to do something that he liked while learning business as well. Where after months of seemingly not responding to this opportunity, 50 Sun screwed this all up and instead listened to his mom, using the money to open a boutique in Atlanta. And while this did piss 50 Cent off because he wanted his son to do this on his own, you know, not with the help of his mom, he still supported this vision, which ultimately failed due to his laziness. Sure, Marquise never following up on the sneakers might seem like a small thing. The type of irresponsibility and lack of initiative teenagers and young adults display all the time. But it was a huge disappointment to me. Forget about being able to afford his personal sneaker collection. That online store could have ended up making us both a killing. We had that conversation years ago. Since then, online sneaker sites have become incredibly lucrative. GOAT.com is valued at $550 million, while StockX.com has a billion dollar valuation. The whole thing really just goes to show me that sometimes someone's success is also someone else's downfall. Fifth, you love yourself? 
I used to. You ask yourself how long, a complicated question would say, how long can you love something that don't love you back? And in this experience, you look and you say, I, I didn't think success would cost me my firstborn, but it's the situation. It's like my grandfather would say, if I like a snake, if it's little like a snake, is it a snake or do you need to be bit? And it really is sad. You know, these two are truly enemies. They've taken shots back and forth at each other over the years. I think the son, though, is truly delusional and as entitled as they come. It does just go to show me how important your parents are and the things they allow you to do and get away with throughout your childhood. I just think that this guy seriously needs to get hit with a heavy dose of reality. Go make his ass work for 725 flipping burgers. And let's hear what he has to say about that 80k a year at 16 years old. I'm talking about that pre-inflation 80k, my people. That's like 120k today. Either way, I do want to know what you guys think about this relationship. As always, also want to thank you guys for dropping a like on today's video and subscribing. But as you guys know, it's been your boy the Tan Superman. And some other rapper feuds out here need to be covered, so I'm out. Peace!